and it's the 3rd of March. Oh, that's a good start to your day. <laughs> oh. Fang Mei is very anime, I think. She, she seems like she was ripped out of like a completely different series, really. Yes, you start the day off by doing the books, but I skip that. Because you don't want to see that again. Does it ever change? Does what change? Like the books. D does anything interesting happen when you're doing it? No, no not today anyway. But anyway, today's Fang Mei's birthday, so we're going to go to the arcades for no reason. And I'm just showing off that you, there's a third floor, but we can't go to it. And there's absolutely no significance to that. <laughs> no fun allowed. Okay, so this is basically a side quest in the game that's kind of obscure because there's no real way you'll know about it unless you read a guide, like I've mentioned before. So next to the Come Over Guest House, do you remember this alleyway at all? You've, you've watched my videos, haven't you? Uh, let's see. I remember lots of alleyways. The end of one is like that virtual on. Is that what it is? Uh, no, this is an alleyway with the lucky hit where you win toy captures. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, here, next to this stand, there's a secret door. And you can go in it. And you can only go in this door about this part of the game, because if you come here on the first disc, that door's boarded up. So you just have to somehow n notice that that door is not boarded up anymore. This happens a lot in this game, doesn't it? Uh, particularly at this disc. So anyway, on this table, Whoa. there's a bronze medal. It, it won't. It won't be <laughs> useful. <laughs> but we have it now, and basically the whole point of this side quest is to get a bunch of medals. And that's the whole point. Hmm? So Ryu just stumbles into this alleyway and is like, oh, a coin, I'll take that. Yeah, and, and also a bunch of toy capsules. Forklifts 1 through 3. So in case you didn't get those in Shenmue 1, you can get them here. Remember the forklift racing? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Well, Completely pointless. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the entire forklift set is here. So the good thing is now we have two sets of forklifts. Hmm? If you consider that a good thing. Well, how how expensive are they? Well, that's the thing. Now we can now we have a spare set. We can sell them at the pawn shops to buy more capsule toys. Yes, we must, we must have more capsule toys. Rio knows what's important. <laughs> I don't really know why it says decoration either, or what duo means on the box. They don't really seem related to what's in there. They just seem like randomly chosen words. Are they like randomly generated toys, or are they always the no, same? No, th these are always the same. The, the, these are like little mini um, arcade machines, like mini Outrun and mini Space Harrier. Ah, uh, yes. Kind of showing them off. And that's about it. Also, here's the medal in slightly more detail. It's a picture of Fang Mei. It just looks like a big two pence piece. It probably is. It's made of bronze, so it <laughs> likely is. So, yeah, we're just going to have a look around in this tiny area because. This is the only reason this room exists, is to hold those items. And now we're going to leave. So... Get back on with the plot. And by plot, I mean, like, air quotes, plot. Yes. Well, you have to make sure that you pick up those toy capsules when you're in that room. Because you can never go back there again. Ever. Really? Yeah, because as soon as you walk out, they close it off. Once this loads, I probably should have heard this, this. But, yeah, you turn around. It's boarded up! Amazing. Did he just like <laughs> board it up as he left? Like, I don't, I don't want know. to find my stash. <laughs> it's a secret room with nothing in it. So now we have a bronze medal that's triggered a flag. So if we go back to the video game arcades, remember that third floor I said was completely closed off? Well, now it's open. You can go up there again. Or well, rather, you can go up there for the first time. Very and now you slowly. can. And, and again, <laughs> yes, with the frame rate. And you, you somehow have to know that picking up the bronze medal gets rid of that barrier. Nothing in the game tells you that. Now we could watch, but that costs $20, so we're just going to enter. It's the same price to watch and enter. Yes, th there's no real point in watching, but yes.
just sounds like she needs to see a doctor. Yeah, she's taking this way too seriously. <laughs> やっとあなたと戦える。君はアイリンじゃないか。ここに立っていれば勝ち続けていれば、いつか会えると思っていた。本当にやるのか。戦いを選択したのはユー。私はその挑戦を受けるだけ。so yeah, it's a, it's a fight. Yeah, to win this fight, you're okay. I'll take your word for it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you just, it's just a random fight tournament that's just being held on top of the video game arcades that you can only go to if you happen to find a bronze medal in a random alley. The way this has been presented reminds me a lot of like the secret bosses in Final Fantasy games. Like finding the dark aeons in Final Fantasy X. That's true. You just like to go back to like the original village and like suddenly, oh hey, there's a boss fight with no real explanation. Well, just, you're just thrown into it. The, the thing about that is, at the very least, you can stumble upon that by accident. I, I refuse to believe that like you could that easily stumble upon this because you need to find the bronze medal first and then know that you have to come here, which is normally blocked off. Someone must have done it. I suppose. Yeah, Eileen is kind of a harder enemy, but no match for Rio, I guess. No match for Rio's regenerating health. Well, her health regenerates as well. I'm not sure how fast it regenerates generally, but it's yours, just kind yours of... regenerates kind of fast. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it is helpful, like, if you do manage to not get hit after a while, then yeah, you, you can recover a lot of health. Oh, she's got like one hit left and she's been wrecking it. That's always the case in these. It's just like when you think you'll win, they just kind of make a comeback. Carrying a lot. I'm assuming it's scripted that she gets better if she gets lo low health. I have no idea. <laughs> sort of punch the tip of her hand. It's like, oh, no, I'm done. <laughs> I can't go on. I do.大丈夫かいえ、心配ない。すまない。つい本気を出した。いや、それでいい。本気でなければ戦う意味などない。また一つ目標ができました。りょ。今度は私の挑戦受けてくれますね。ああ、わかった。でも、その前に彼女と戦
勝ったらいいところに連れてってあげるわ、uh, baby. 勝てたらね<笑>行くわよ So now we're fighting Izumi from the Tomato Convenience Store. She's really hard! Of course. She'll parry a whole bunch of your moves all the time, it's just like, I don't know. There's, you have to dodge a lot as well. She sure can float. She has a lot of these weird kick moves, yeah. Also throws, which are kind of annoying. There's also one annoying twist to this fight, which will probably get me killed. Or it will, it does get me killed, but it will probably, you know, catch you by surprise the first time you play this game. I also noticed that lunging strike where you can attack after she parries. But then she parries the other attack anyway, so. Yeah, you have to watch out for that. <laughs> What happens if you fail? <laughs> oh, you'll see. Oh, God. But you, you have to. The thing is, do you see the command? It was like yeah. X and B and then Y and A at the same time. And that's really hard to do. You have to like move your thumb from the control stick in order to do it properly. You have to use both hands. Because it's hard to do it with like a thumb. Also, she kicks you in the crotch a lot. So how about Fang Lei's birthday, huh? Yeah, did, didn't you like not say anything when she like woke you up? Yeah, that's the other thing is... Oh yeah, watch this. And then Ryo died. The end. Wow. Yeah, that's what happens if that's the finishing blow. She can... that doesn't always instantly kill you. If you do get hit by it and you have a lot of health, it takes off like a quarter of your health bar. So you have to be really careful not to mm. get hit by that. I guess you so get yeah, this infinite is, tries. Yeah, you, well, no, well, infinite as in it costs you $20 each time you do it. So, this is like... I edited in. I, there's another time I lose, but yeah, this is round three. <laughs> you also have to watch that like, cutscene each time, which is kind of annoying. I notice how like that guy who asked you to be on a watch. Where would you even watch from? Like, just the doorway? No idea. Because he's not even there. <laughs> I d yeah. Well... I'm not really sure who he is, because he appears a few other times as well. But yeah, like, if you... You start the day with Fang Mei's birthday, and she says absolutely nothing, so again, unless you, like, know about her birthday, there's no indication that today is actually her birthday. And unless you get her a birthday present, she doesn't say anything about it either, so... It just seems like... How, how are you supposed to know it's Fang Mei's birthday, aside from talking to Eileen? I, I mean, I'm, maybe it's just me. Someone out there probably just thought, yeah, of course you'd go to Pigeon Park and speak to the Kung Fu practicing girl who happens to be Fang Mei's friend, and then meet them at the Manway Bistro at certain times of the day leading up to their birthday, which is on the 3rd of March. Seems yeah. obvious, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, most people that play, I'm assuming they're going to go roughly, like, straight, like, through the story, and, like, spin off. Well, that's what I did when I first played this game. I was just like, yeah, this, you know, I just went through the story. And, like, even if you, I don't know, like, in between the main story elements, you can get distracted and you can do exploring and stuff. But, again, to find this stuff, you have to sort of meet specific time requirements. Like, you have to do the Fang Mei's birthday within the days leading up to that birthday. So if you're like, I guess, what most people who owned a Dreamcast did and continued from Shenmue 1 and then you start the game in like the beginning of January, you're probably never even going to get to Fang Mei's birthday. Also, I hate that so much. <laughs> like the, the, the clip that I edited out, I was like winning and then she just did that twice in a row and I lost all my health. Well, she is like the hardest opponent in the game, right?
One of the hardest, yeah. It's a bit silly. <laughs> At least you get some good music to accompany you. Yeah. Although, saying that, I do miss like the um, really kind of dull but also atmospheric battle music for Shadow One. Especially in like the was it seventy yeah. man fight? Yeah, they, they there's like the special one they use as a seventy man battle. Yeah, slightly remixed version of it. It was, it was like a single beat repeated every like few seconds. Yeah, it was, but it was a really great. monotonous tone, but yeah, it was really cool. Oh, yeah. I think the best strategy for dealing with Azumi is just to use moves that have a long reach like that, so she can't like come up to you and grab you so much. So how many little girls has Rio beaten up now? Two? Daijouka. Which is probably too many, but still. There was that one back in Japan. Back in what the docks. Who was this? Uh, I can't remember. Is that like... One, uh, I think... The stand lady was like, hey, go help my sister or friend or something because she's hanging around with the Oh, the, the two bullies. And you just beat the them all up. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, I was gonna say, like, this game does have more female characters in general. Because, hey, civil medal! So, the next one is the gold medal. I tried to think what you'd need to do to get that. Well, here's a picture of Joy on it. Same on both sides, so, you know, heads or tails. But yeah, um... You draw like a moustache on one, and that's how you differentiate <laughs> it. But yeah, I'll just get a drink first before you do the next part. Of course. Wouldn't be Shenmue without buying a drink. Nope. Of course, the Japanese version had the Coke product placement. Coca-Cola. Sure could go for a Coke right now. Mm. Sure you wouldn't want a Pepsi? Well, yeah, you would, actually. Man, now I actually do ah, want a Pepsi, good. thanks. <laughs> Man, you have a Pepsi fridge in your room, it should be stocked at all times. What the trouble is, if I fill it up, then I just drink it. <laughs> so, yes, um... Azumi said she'll take us to a special place, so we're going to take her up on that offer. Like, so hard. And again, she doesn't really explain what this special place is, but if you go up to her, you'll notice that the Y button has changed to a, a button, so you press that, and it activates this. So, it's the same day. I know. <laughs> The game kind of assumes that you, you do it on another day. So let's go to this place. Wait, who's going to cover the store? The... Come back! Duck racing! <laughs> His face! <laughs> He's like, duck racing. <laughs> so, you can bet on the ducks, and they have different odds and stuff. So you will need to pick the best ducks. <laughs> it's adorable, I know! Oh, God. <laughs> so you want to go for the ones <laughs> you want to go for the ones at the best speed, but yeah. 
I mean, Witness. speed and stamina are self-explanatory. I think the stat for guts is, like, how heavy they are, so if they bump into another duck, the one with the less guts is the one that will end up stumbling. This game, this is a very deep racing game. Are you sure? So we'll just pick the, the white one. Because he has the best stats. Oh. You can see the different odds you get. The amount, of, the amount of money you win is dependent on the odds, which is dependent on their stats. So if you pick a really shit duck and it happens to win, then you'll get loads of money. Oh god, watch him go! Quack! Is this like dog racing where there's some kind of incentive? Dog, dog racing? Like, we you know, with the whole... The hound oh, racing like they, they have that before the hair, don't they? Uh, yeah. No, they, they're just racing. They, they know what's at stake. So, yeah. I mean, I suppose the good ducks would tend to, like, hang back until the final stretch and then do a speed boost at the end, at about this point. And then if they go fast, they'll fly past the steps. Smart ducks. What a shit duck! <laughs> yeah, I like the, the ending. It just has the multiple angle replay. Yeah, we lost our twenty dollars. I guess you have to get first. Yeah, you have to, it has to be first in order to win. Remember Final Fantasy VII's Chocobo Racing? Yeah, well, that can go eat a dick. Because <laughs> this beats it every in every aspect. I guess you can't yeah. like hold uh, hold both shoulder buttons in this to give you a duck infinite, uh, infinite stamina. Like you can. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I abused the hell out of that. So yeah, um, we're going to get some more money, but also ah. we're going to need to get our own duck so we can enter the duck race oh ourselves. Oh god, this gets better, doesn't it? <laughs> I know, but while we're getting some money, because we have no money, we need money to enter the race, but while we're going to get some money, um, where do you think we'll find a duck? I'm going to go ahead and say like a pond. Right, that would be the logical explanation, wouldn't it? Yeah. But there's no ponds in, in this game. So All right. In, in the areas we've been to, do you think of anywhere where there might be a duck? That would imply that I remember anything about this game. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. You haven't seen any pet stores, have you? No. Oh. I'm out of ideas. <laughs> okay. Well... The funny thing is, is that there is a market that does sell ducks, but you don't get it from there. Really? Well, we're going to sell things at the pawn shop first. I'm just showing off here that you can look at the flyers that they give you when you go into the pawn shops and look at the different prices they give you. And you get lots of money for different sets, and as you can see, for the forklift set, you get $90. So you can get some money like that. There were like three different sets there, weren't there? Well, it, the set I'm trying to sell is just the 1 to 5 one. Because uh, that's the ones we have duplicates of. I, I, I am kind of curious what, how much money I'd get if I just sold all of my toy capsules, but I, d I don't want to do that. It's not like a case where you want to make a save, sell everything, and like, oh, okay, and then just load your save because, oh god, my toys. <laughs> I want them back. There's not even like an option of, like, sell all either, so you have to, like, just go through your entire collection and sell them individually. Ah, you've done worse. I have. <laughs> I am just getting rid of these dice because who gives a shit about dice? Hi. Okay, so now we've got some money. We should go get a duck. Yeah. 
Is it, is it going to be a special deck? Yes. Well, kind of. In, in the way that it's, it's special as in why the hell would the duck be here kind of special. Because we're going to the Manmo Temple. Uh. And of course we're, we're just going to go to the backyard. And of we're just going to start catching leaves. Yeah, of course. Th this is where you'd, you'd think of getting a duck, right? <laughs> Yeah, ducks, they love le leaves. <laughs> yeah. Do, do ducks live in trees? Do they make nests like other birds? Sure. Actually, that is a good point. Where do ducks normally live in the wild? In ponds, just in, like, hedges or something? Just generally they around. Their eggs? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to catch yes. a bunch of leaves. Again, nothing in the game tells you you have to do this, but we're just going to do it anyway. Maybe the game just expects you to keep up your practice like every day, every single Maybe. day. Maybe. Go to the park, punch the air, go here, catch some leaves. Well, the good thing is they take out the whole punching the air thing in this game, so you don't have to do that. There, there, there is, like, as you keep practicing moves in fights, that move will get better, so the more you use a move, the more better it gets, but aside from that, you don't have to grind in car parks anymore. Yeah, so Ryu does get better at catching leaves. Catches like multiple at once. Oh. Here, feather. So, one leaf of the tree is enough to catch. So yeah, the idea is you're supposed to catch like red leaves, like lots of red leaves at once, and then when you do that, then the, a, a duck feather will appear. Yes. The tree's got a whole lot of leaves. I know that's pretty common for trees, but uh... yeah, they they never seem to run out. Yeah. Also, it's not really the season for, to be losing leaves, is it? <laughs> it's like March. Not not quite. I mean, there was that one in the other park where you like you start yes. punching it. Oh, well, we punched it. You yeah, know, we punched you're not the, punching uh, this one. It's just fallen by itself. It the only way we know how with karate. You didn't like edit that sound in, did you? What the duck? It, the, the falling yeah, sound. <laughs> no, that, that that's in there. Who oh boy? Cartoony falling sound. So now the duck's in our inventory. Just jam it in our pants. Yep. We can have a look at it as well. Here's the duck. In all its glory. What <laughs> colour bow tie are you going to give it? Uh, the game gives it a white bow tie. That's boring. Yeah. Well, I think we should name the duck Starscream. I because think that's that a good was name. the second. Yes. Because that's the second place in the whole kitten naming contest I had a while ago. If you can call it's it my, that. my personal recommendation as well. Yes. Starscream the duck. Oh, so you're just trying to get some more money. You're not going to sell the duck, are you? <laughs> no, no, not that. Hey. This duck comes from a tree, so it's like worth a lot, maybe? Sure, why not? Maybe Starscream grew from a tree. I'll believe anything at this point. <laughs> None of this really makes sense, does it? No, not in the slightest. <laughs> At no point when you're playing this game would you think, gee, I'd want to, like, you know, go to the temple and catch leaves for no reason, let alone catch a duck from a tree. Also, yeah, this shop sells, so or rather, buy Sonic figures at $2 a piece, so I'm getting rid of all my duplicates. Is that like 11 tails? Yes. Wow. <laughs> and I can make like $100 off all my extra Sonic figures. You really want to get that last one, don't you? The last one. Oh yes, that yeah. last Sonic figure. 
Oh, I've spent so much money on these stupid Sonic figures, it's, it's silly, really. Let's see, I'm just doing a bit of this. Probably should have edited this out, really. So, so, with this the is the exciting there. part. This is what everyone watches these for, right? Roll on top. Yeah. All the gambling. Gambling. You should squeeze in some lucky hit. Just, you know, like when you've got space. I only got $300, that'll do. Now we have the money to yeah. enter the duck race. Let's go back to the tomato convenience store and speak to... Uh, Izumi. Who has this habit of disappearing and then fading back into existence. Well, that's the Dreamcast fault. Poor Dreamcast. <laughs> Let's enter into a race. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Starscream can talk, apparently. <laughs> so, this time when we go to the wise men's quarter, we have the same cutscene, but the duck with us. I forget why we're even in Hong Kong. Fifty bucks. Yep, we need fifty dollars to enter the race. Better be a good duck. Well, Starscream said he's gonna kick some ass, so let's do it. Let's believe in Starscream. Oh. So, yeah, <laughs> what the game doesn't tell you is Starscream is a huge piece of shit. And he has terrible stats. So God what you're it, supposed Starscream. to do is... <laughs> Starscream is the worst. But what you're supposed to do is you're, you're supposed to keep racing the duck. And as you keep winning, its stats improve. And then once it's good enough, then it can compete with the good ducks. How much money does this require? Probably a few hundred. I edit most of my tries out, but yeah. I, I win... I basically feed the duck racing thing by like earning money by gambling in the duck race and then spending money back into it by racing the duck. If that makes sense. Hong Kong everybody. Yes. Clearly I've been like, I've been to Hong Kong a few times and clearly I've been going to the wrong places because I haven't seen duck racing. Also that duck was going the wrong direction. Yeah, when you run out of stamina, you become, like, slow. Where the hell is the last one? <laughs> it went the wrong direction, and now we have to wait for either... It, we either wait for it to somehow cross the line, or we wait for the time to reach 1 minute 20, and then the game just gives up. So, yeah. So we're gonna have to keep doing this. <laughs> And yeah, to get the gold medal, you have to basically get first place. But Starscream is a huge piece of shit, and he's not going to do that just yet. Yeah. So instead, we're just going to bet on some ducks. Now, at this point. I'm just trying to find a good duck, and you can make a good amount of money from duck racing because, like, the odds are quite. Like, if you win, you'll get like four times your, your wins. Your bet. So you can potentially make a good amount of money. You just gotta choose the right duck. Yes. So you notice that the Japanese like stats are different than the English ones. Like the higher ranking is S. Yeah. <laughs> 
did they like the translators not think we had that kind of system? I don't know. Dude. Well, sorry, I fast forward this. Check out this finish. I pretty much lucked out with that because I spent all my money on that one duck <laughs> and now we have $400. So, I'm going to add out a few more tries. But as you can see, the duck does improve quite a lot. Hmm. Do you get like a... Does the guy say what the stats of your duck are? Or no, just like, you have oh, no indication okay. of what your, the stats of your duck is. <laughs> Another thing the game never bothers to tell you. You're just somehow supposed to figure this out by continually trying. Ryo's just got this straight face the entire time. He has the same face for a lot of things. He doesn't really change or react too much. Are you guys excited? So, remember when I said that the forklift racing in Shenmue 1 was like a really surreal experience? Yeah. I take all of that back. So yeah, what you're supposed to do is use the final bit here to sprint like hell, and then you'll fly over the steps, and while you're in the air, you don't use up stamina. Despite all the flapping. Despite the flapping, yes. And we won! Congratulations, Starscream. After like $300, I think, we finally won. And then we have the final medal. Is that all of them now? Yes, that's all three medals. Was it There's no it? point. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> There's no point in the medals. They don't do yeah. anything. They're yeah, just more like achievements, okay. but like really obscure achievements. Mm. I don't. I don't think we should think on this too hard. I think no. we should just take it as like, is. Out, yeah, outside this quest, ah. no one really mentions this ever. No. But that's that's the side quest, and that's. To be honest, this was kind of like the main reason I LP Shenmue 2, or rather started playing it again so I could experience this bit. I'll say there's a picture of Su Ying on the coin if you can make it out. And it's all thanks to Starscream! Is that just going to hang around in your inventory forever now? Yes! This duck will stay with us for the entire game. So just just keep that in mind when you when you watch the rest of this. Just to show off here though, if you go back into the duck race, there are different tiers of duck. You have ducklings, which are even faster than the white ducks. That doesn't seem very fair. Well, the ducklings can like totally wreck you. Like there, I bumped into it and I stumbled, which like forces you to lose stamina and slow down. Oh, God. Yeah, they just completely wreck you. They just zoom past you and like don't slow down. So, yeah. Alternatively, you can also enter a race with the duckling's mother. The big brown duck. And then she'll just, like, pelt it all the way through. She doesn't slow down at all. So, yeah, you, you just have to keep practicing if you want to beat this duck. But there's no real reward for beating that duck, so that's purely optional, really. Well, if you ever find yourself with far too much money, and yeah, you've already you completed, like, like, all your capsule toy collections. I suppose. But yeah, that, that'll do for now. But we do have some money, so I'm just going to waste more of it using the Sonic machine. You could, like, repay your debt to watch his face from Shenmue 1. Oh, Fuku-san, yeah. Yeah, that's his name. I always found it strange, yeah, we never, we never did give him back the money, even though we clearly had the money once we started earning a whole bunch of money from the forklift driving. That's because Ryo is a terrible human being. <laughs> he really is. He just... Yeah, I don't know. 
Like back at the uh, diner. Hey, do you want to have dinner? Dr. Eggman! <laughs> oh god. Dr. Eggman! <laughs> we finally got the last one. That's uh... I, I didn't realise that was the one you were waiting for. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the last Sonic collection, that's the entire collection. And now I have to never... I never have to use the stupid Sonic machine ever again. So, yeah. You're just going to start using all the other ones instead. Yes, here's another machine. It's the... I, I can't remember if I showed this off before, but it's the Hong Kong machine. Where you get things from Hong Kong. Which, by things from Hong Kong, they just mean like random things from this game. Like, Let's have props and, and bits of scenery. Well, that's not uh, really. <laughs> Man, Hong Kong is full of Super Bowls. They're just rolling all over the place, you know. Alright, let's try again, and away we go. A Hong Kong boat. Is there anything particularly Hong Kong about it, or is it just a boat? Well, it's, I guess it's kind of typical of the ones you would see in Hong Kong. Hmm? Hong Kong Lighthouse? Uh, like, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, one more. I mean, you know, we have the money to spend, so why not? Hong Kong Kai. I'm not convinced. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I think last time I got like a, hot, like a Chinese broadsword or something, so that. Well, actually, no, that's not really Hong Kong either, so. That's pretty much all we have to do today. Um, I think we've forgotten something. Hmm. I can't quite remember. No. Uh, let's just go home. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's nearly bedtime. An interesting thing, though, is that the, the duck race. While you're in that duck race thing, time does not progress at all. So you can spend as much time as you like racing ducks and betting maybe, on ducks. Maybe it never actually happened. Maybe it was all a dream. A dream where we woke up and we had lots of money in our in our pockets. And a duck. And a duck. That or duck racing takes place in its own time dimension. Oh, hey, wait, phone was oh, yeah, that was it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow. Didn't even bother to wrap it or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you ask that? だいかから聞いたんですか私これ見るの初めてですよ。え、この前、服洗剤でファン名が。ああ、あれは服を見てたんですよ。チャイナドレス。服ええ、ちょっとローシにお似合いだろうなって。私もローシの誕生日に送り
the Shenmue 2 is just like the main storyline more or less. Oh. Well, and Captain Toys. We, we, well, yes. But also, the stuff we did with Fang Mei also means that we get more optional scenes with Fang Mei. Good. And like more cutscenes. And our relationship with Fang Mei is now such that the. Well, I won't spoil it, but yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, you know yeah, what I'm going to yeah. do now? What? I'm going to watch these Donald Duck videos. <laughs> <laughs>